and a half thousand. Our commentator at the county ground is Phil Duffel. The start of a very important week for Swindon with this local derby followed by another with the visit of Oxford in midweek. Two wins would go a long way to silencing their early season critics. One change for Swindon should see a stiffening of the midfield as Scott Leach returns for only his second game of the season. Striking out for the home side here is Ify Onora. This is his first taste of a West Country derby since joining from Gillingham at the tail end of last season for a little over £100,000. Bristol City's Division 1 baptism gets into full flow this week with Swindon and then Sunderland, their opponents, in two tough-looking away fixtures. But they've already discovered there are no easy games at this level. Four changes in all for John Ward today, giving the likes of Dyche, Doherty, Murray and Thorpe the chance to show what they're made of. City had to pay a club record £1.2 million to net Onora's former strike partner Adi Akinbai from Gillingham in the summer. But he's beginning to repay that heavy investment with four goals for his new club. So it's Swindon in familiar all red who get this game underway. Both sides remember looking for their first league win. Indeed, Swindon's two previous home league games have ended 1-1. And City's two away games in the same score. So the smart money perhaps on a score draw. Now Talia almost gave that straight to Murray. And today's referee is Paul Ryger, who comes from Leamington Spa. Good and forward to Endar. It was nicely taken on the chest, but he couldn't get the pass away. Now Walters against Bell. The Swindon man just gets there first. Kerslake. This is a first touch for Leach, who'll be delighted to be back in action. He's been plagued by groin problems for so long. Onura with Watts, and Gooden with a chance to cross. Bullock finding space in the box. Edwards knocked him down, and a referee says a penalty for Swindon. And what a start to the game. Bristol City are stunned. The referee, Ryger has pointed to the spot and Bristol City have conceded a penalty in just over a minute's play. It's going to be Mark Walters against Keith Welsh. Swindon lead 1-0, cool as you like, by Mark Walters. He's taken exception to that challenge. Ball with the kick. Bullock the target. Edwards into trouble. And Dars there. It's across the line. And Swindon have doubled their money. And we still haven't played five minutes. And I'm afraid it was another shocking piece of defending by Bristol City. Edwards, the guilty man, with a poor defensive header. And George and Dar took full advantage. Only his second goal of the season, but what a start this for the home team. Bristol City just can't get a slice of possession at the moment to try and calm their nerves. Onora down to Endar, another chance for Swindon. Good block this time by Watts. The two front men for Swindon look razor sharp this afternoon. Bullock to Walters, lovely passing. It's in there for Onora, it's 3-0. And Bristol City are being ripped to shreds by Swindon Town. And that was a quite brilliantly contrived goal. Superb pass and movement, devastating cross. And what about that for a finish? If the Onora, his second, Swindon's third, it could be all over. Looking for Scott Murray, he's taken Reeves out of the middle. The Swindon defender had a little bit too much nas for him. Now locked to Thorpe in space. Still Tony Thorpe, great chance. 
Well, Bristol City need a goal back quickly. Thorpe with the ideal opportunity. Talia got his angles just right. Walters. Ball forward looking for Leach. He couldn't quite take it in his stride, though. Now that's only as far as Ty Gooden. Towards Endar. It's almost an own goal. Well, the referee says that Swindon player touched the ball last, but for my money, that was Dyche who just turned it wide of the post. Swindon just holding a line on the edge of their 18-yard box. And now they'll look to break. Gooden forward to Endar. Gooden again. Goes down by two yellow shirts. Tinian with Talia a long way from goal, may try his luck. It's just too high. Right idea, though. John Ward and Terry Connor have got a job on their hands in their half-time team talk. Found with a crossfield ball, but well read by Gooden. Anora makes his way near post, and Dars on the far side. Still a chance for Swindon. Welsh is there. You always fancy a keeper on his near post in that situation. Doherty and Cram linking well. On the far side is Tinian. It calls for a good cross. It's Akin Bailly. It's a goal for Bristol City. And maybe there is hope for the visitors. For the first time, Bristol City got a good ball into the danger area, and Akin Bay bravely went in and got the goal. His fifth for City, and maybe there's hope for them. Swindon perhaps have a problem now because Talia was injured in that collision with Akin Bay. Tinian, whose cross provided the goal. Away by Kersley. There's an extra urgency about the visitors now. Check forward for Cram. Reeves tight at his back. It'll be a corner kick and perhaps the first real test for Talia since that knock. Dyson Watts uh, again up from the back. On by Cram, just over the top. Sniffing around that six-yard area as ever, Colin Cram. So Davis. And Dar with some good control under pressure. Got there and fairly so. And this is Cram hoping to break. Murray with a super burst from midfield. Scott Murray's in for Bristol City, challenged by Davis. It's another penalty. This time it's Davis on Murray, and Bristol City have a chance to get back in the game. And Davis has been red carded to rub salt into the wound for Swindon. The young substitute has only made a handful of appearances for Swindon. And now he departs the scene, having conceded a penalty. He's been sent off. Well, Mickey Bell scored seven times from the penalty spot last season for Bristol City. It's his first of this season. It's just made it into the top corner. 3-2, Bristol City continue the fight back. Talia got a hand to it, but couldn't keep it out. What a game we have now. Swindon, remember, down to ten men. This is Murray. Going for glory. May well have hit the stanchion. Scott Murray only had eyes for goal. And this is Locke, and it's like a yellow tide now. Sweeping forward towards that Swindon goal. Doherty with a shot. Talia did well. A 
it's come to Murray. It's hit the bar by Akinbai. Extraordinary escape for Swindon. Murray's now claiming a penalty. It's still in there. And somehow Swindon survive. Addy Akinbai cannot believe how he failed to turn that home from point blank range. to Hulbert, blows down quickly, and Hulbert with the shirt tug is going to be in trouble, he's already been booked, and Robin Hulbert now is going off, and it's mayhem at the county ground, both Swindon youngsters, both the substitutes have been sent off. Not with a cross. Akin by his header. Again, he's denied by the woodwork. Well, when it's not your day, it's not your day. Addy Akin by. Well, he could have had a hat trick. Well, he could have done, and either side could have really won that game, couldn't they? Either side, they both reached dizzy heights and they both reached some really bad lows, to be honest. And uh, at the end of the day, Swindon had the luck of man to hold out for the points. Yeah, so lots to discuss later on. We must take a short break, though. But still. City local derby. We're delighted. We're delighted with the three points, which is more important at this stage. You know, we've played far better and controlled games far better than we did today, um, and we've got nothing out of it. But today we've got three points from what we didn't really deserve. The start was everything you've dreamed of, though, oh, wasn't it? It's a, it's a manager's dream, isn't it? They like when you when you you're three nil up in a local derby after ten minutes. What more? What more can you ask for? And I said that to the players at half time. No, try and enjoy it, and he didn't. We didn't enjoy one little bit that second half, that's for sure. Well, we got ourselves to blame in the first half. It's nothing to do with the manager or nothing to do with anyone else up there. It's us, it's us who's playing. I mean, we managed to come out in the second half saying we're going to get something out of it. Even if we get 3-0, three, three we, we weren't going to let in no more goals. We, uh, we, thought, um, we thought we'd come out and done better than we thought. We got managed to get two goals and that was unfortunate not to get a point out of it. I could see you looking amazed at your bad luck when you hit the woodwork twice as well in that second half. Yeah, I mean, as I say, when you're down there, things things always go wrong for you, things won't go in, and when you're up there, things just go in for you. Um, when, I, when I hit that bar, I thought, oh, this will not going to be our day, but we managed to keep plugging away. Hopefully we can start like we did in the second half at Sunderland. We're going to go there and try and get, um, as I said, start the second half. We're going to try and start the first half there, as we did in the second half, so hopefully we can get our three points there, and especially for the travelling fans. I mean. I think the fans of the turn up there were absolutely magnificent. So hopefully they can carry on supporting us and be behind us. And if it's proved nothing else, it's proved that this really is a very tight league and literally every point, every game, you've got to scrap all the, all the time for. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, and, and that's what it's all about. And Get your points when you can and get your luck when you can, ride your luck when you can, because um, we've been out of luck so far this season, apart from today. Well, they certainly had their fair share of luck in that game, especially in the second half, didn't they? Yeah, definitely. They held out, really, and I think Steve McMahon knows that. But in the first half, they had so much luck. I mean, the penalty incident in the first three minutes uh, set the tone for the game. And it's all down to the referee. I, this is definitely not a penalty. Um, he's just had a touch off the elbow from Rob, and he's gone down like a swallow. And the referee's fallen for, for it. And you see in the, in the next clip, the referee's in a great position to see that. And basically, he's made a, a real ricket. And, and that's at the tone of the game. And from that, Rob is in total turmoil, you know, and, and he's made a terrible error for the second goal here. But, you know, and that's within five minutes, three minutes, you've gone out a local derby, you've given away a penalty, and he's made an error like that, and I wasn't surprised to see him come off after 45 minutes. Yeah, so 2-0 became 3-0, and then obviously City had it all to do, but they looked a completely different side in the second half, didn't they? That's right. Well, John Ward has said that when they've gone down this season, they've, they've played very well. And it's just a shame that that's come from 3-0 down, because if it had been 2, they would have had a chance of getting something from the game. And a couple of sending-offs helped them, though, didn't it? Maybe they should have taken a bit more advantage of it. Well, this is all down to inexperience by the Swindon players. You know, two subs, they've come on. He's, I mean, Scott's in on goal, but he's still got the keeper to beat, and he's, and he's just brought him down. And it's a definite sending-off, and he's gone. And, and they've got a penalty, a better chance to score. Mm. And this is ridiculous, the lad Holbert. He's been on for eight minutes. This is his second offence. And he's been sent off, and I'm sure Steve McMahon has given him instructions to show some discipline and, and you know, to do a job for the team. And basically, those two lads have caused, caused uh, Swindon a problem, and it's all down to sharing experience. As the club hits a new financial crisis, despite their weekend victory, and more on that in a minute, they're £3.5 million in debt and desperately need new backers. On Saturday, Swindon were celebrating their first league win of the season. Today, the scoreline was still there, but the county ground was empty of cheer. 
Deep in debt, the club are cutting back on their budget by half a million pounds. So out go eight backroom boys, including reserve team coach Ross McLaren, who's been with the Reds 10 years, and chief scout Les O'Neill. Manager Steve McMahon was beside himself today. He doesn't know which way to turn. I'm just basically disappointed in the, in the, in the whole situation. Um, people are going to say, well, why not you? And I know that, and I know they've probably already been saying it, and that's the question I'm asking myself. But and again, and, and I don't want to go into it again, and I've been told, and I'm, I'm waffling on, I think, because I feel so strongly about it. So I'd rather not say anything at this moment in time until I get, until I speak to the, um, and get the right advice from uh, my solicitors. The good news, if you can call it that, is by saving money, by cutting the staff, the club may be able to attract new investors, new money, but try telling that to those who love their team. We're losing some cracking people here and we're thinking about that and we're thinking about are there other ways uh, in the club where we can redeploy them, um, some people, because sad, it's, not, it's desperately sad. I've had an awful weekend um, with this and I've spoken to everybody I can uh, on a personnel level, the, if, the people who, who are going as well. Um, and it's very sad for me, but um, I, I, I keep saying it, you know, I mean, it, it's not that I'm not emotional, I'm desperately emotional, but it's one step backwards, um, hopefully to take two or three forwards. On Wednesday, Swindon faced their biggest home game of the season. It's the local derby against Oxford, and manager McMahon couldn't or wouldn't say today whether he'll still be in charge. Well, I've got to consider a lot of things, haven't I? I've got to think a lot, everything, family um, decisions that I make here, whether it's going to affect players and the staff I've already got here, the staff that I've gone. So it's a process of everything, and not just not just uh, it's not just about me. It's about everybody's emotions. And McMahon, of course, got that dreaded vote of confidence from his chairman last week. Well, on the field, the club finally has something to cheer about as they took on Bristol City at the county ground. Swindon's first league win at the expense of Bristol City began with a helping hand from the ref, a harsh penalty award converted by Mark Walters. It got better for the home side when George Dar seized on a defensive error to make it 2-0. And with only eight minutes on the clock, the best move of the match ended with Ifeonura's fine strike. City's second half fight back started with Adi Akinbaye beating Frank Talia to the ball. The Swindon keeper suffering a broken nose in the clash. Then a trip by Sol Davis on Scott Murray resulted in a City penalty and a red card for the Swindon youngster. Mickey Bell making it 3-2 from the spot. And ten men became nine when another teenager, Robin Holbert, was also sent off. But Swindon bravely held on to win.